Hello, so welcome to my monthly mark making for October and I'm in my usual position but it's very windy today so I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to hold on to my materials uh, and not get blown away um, and I'm going to try and do some videoing but you can see hopefully that the change has been quite dramatic since last month when it was really only the startings of the signs of autumn and now we're well and truly here with lots of the gorgeous yellows and uh, browns and um, sort of greeny sort of sludgy greens in a way olivey greens and those sorts of colors and then the paler colors off into the distance and there's some dramatic sky and as i say it's quite windy so i'm going to turn around and get going and i'll share with you my uh, equipment just before i I do that so that you can see what I'm using. I'm using some slightly different things. I'm pretty much the same, but some dish changes in colour, as you'd imagine. Okay, so here I am. I've got lots of tissues to hand. I hope they don't blow away. I've got um, my usual paints, some acrylic paints, uh, different, slightly different colours. I've got um, an olivey green in there, and this is the uh, uh, burnt sienna, and I've got a creamy colour. Um, but so that's the bird sienna, sorry, and then I've got a creamy colour. I've got the woodies and usual pencils, ink tense pencils, and then I've got a couple of inks. So this time I've got a sort of a goldy, goldy yellow colour ink. I've got a uh, blue ink, which I might not use actually, and I've got a greeny uh, ink. These are Liquitex inks, these ones. The, 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 the greeny one and the, and the blue one, is they're both Liquitex inks. That one's a magic ink, but they're all acrylic inks. And then I've got this uh, green uh, paint, I might not use green gold. So just a mix of things, I've got some charcoal in there and uh, my art graft and I've got some tools which are, are basically just uh, paint brushes really and I've got a dip pen. Okay, so I will get going and see how I go. Okay, so I thought I'd try something a little bit different this time and speak a little bit over the uh, video. So I've taken the sound out because the wind is very blustery. So apologies for the earlier parts, but I wanted you to be able to see the view and I got the, um, the sound on and I wanted to be able to just narrate it a little bit. Uh, so now I'm pretty much starting in a way with these sheets that I, I often do. And that is I want to kind of get some movement on it to start with. What I find is that if I start with dry media, it's very hard for me to retain a kind of a looseness as I go through and I get tighter and tighter. Whereas if I start in this way where I'm really um, uh, getting the ink to do its business without really being too sort of controlling over it, uh, that really helps then to set the, s the stage really for the rest of the rest of it. And the other thing is that if I've used inks and I've got um, a movement on the paper, it's much easier then for me to add uh, in quite a loose way some of the acrylic uh, paint. Uh, and then subsequently I'll work over and I might come back and add more of the liquidy me media, but I do find that it acts as quite a useful sort of start point. Uh, and you can see now that I'm adding what would actually be quite dry paint and be quite sort of lumpy. So uh, the the addition of the uh, water and spraying and the and the ink um, just helps once I'm getting that uh, bit of paint on. And as you can see, uh, it does need a bit of help. So I'm uh, moving the board from side to side uh, before now starting working over it. Uh, I think actually this is just using a pencil. I'm just trying to, to get a variety of mark making that is somehow reflective of what I'm observing and feeling from my view in front of me. So the whole uh, point really is to uh, try and get this variety of marks that somehow um, are reflective of the scene. And I'm not trying to paint a view, obviously. I'm looking in different directions and so on. It's just that sort of feel of the season, of the uh, landscape, um, and uh, to try and get some sense of that down on the paper.
So here we are with the pretty much finished uh, sheet for October and hopefully you can see the richness of the reds and the rusts and the yellows and the golds that has become much more dominant this month uh, compared to September and it will be interesting to see whether by next month it's over or whether it's richer or what's going on with it and um, as usual I've just tried to show a variety of marks and I'm now going to write my prose for October okay so here we have the completed October booklet can you believe it's October gosh only two more months to go so this is now what I consider to be the middle of autumn so the colors are kind of reflecting that now some really lovely kind of colors coming through so the map the, the 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 moors have gone quite peaty now and that kind of lovely reddy brown that they are and you can see the marks and the colors obviously in the reds coming through and the golds and the oranges so this was a mix of watercolor paint acrylic paint inks so all manner of things going on there and being moved across the surface in different ways and hopefully you can see some of the scraping and so on so that's the first page you never know what you're going to get with this it's a bit like uh, tom hanks you know life's a box of chocolates you never know what you're going to get um this is more of that but kind of like drifting off this time so much more white space in this page which i quite like and then we've got the inks coming through and the sort of bleeding mix mix of them together and I scraped down because you do get this sense of a sort of grainy scrapiness of the surface of the moor so I was trying to reflect that in the some of the marks I was making uh, which I'm quite happy with in a way because they kind of contrast quite nicely with the much clearer colours and areas and then this uh, this is the the compressed charcoal coming through um, the edges of uh, the fields and so on, splattering. Quite like this page, more different sorts of marks. And these were the marks that I was making to reflect the way you could see the, 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 the sort of clumps of leaves or leaves themselves on the tree canopies. Um, as the colours are changing and some of the leaves are lost. So I wanted to reflect that and that's what that represents really, the uh, lovely orange colours of, of some of the leaf canopies. And then this very strong sort of red marks and lines coming through and the graininess again. And then this um, twiddly lines that I like to, to do to reflect the twigs and the branches and the patterns. And this is kind of the same but different, if you like. I like some of these sort of spidery, harsher lines. I think this was something in the foreground that I was marking and I had a very strange tool there. That was just a, a sort of a, 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 gra a, 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 a graphite, I think it was. So um, might have even been the clutch pencil. And then obviously the ink tense pencils and then the inks bleeding. That reddy brown is burnt sienna paint, acrylic paint. Oh, and then it sweeps across differently again. So that's quite an interesting sort of scrapey mark. And then I think these were sort of like from the foreground originally and the shapes and the patterns of the sedum in its red sort of richness, really. And more of that uh, compressed charcoal again. OK, so that's uh, October and can't believe there's only November and December uh, to be done. And then I will have a whole set of them. And then, as I think I mentioned before, I have all of the covers to think about. And I've started to measure them all out and so on, but I'm going to have to create the painted covers. That I'm probably going to cover cardboard or some such thing, but I will cover that separately. Thanks very much for watching. Please do like and subscribe. And uh, if you um, have already subscribed to my newsletter, then uh, next weekend, uh, the 28th of November, uh, you'll receive uh, an update with a new release of eight works on paper, which are of the woodland. Some are spring woodland and some autumn woodland. So if you'd like to get first dibs uh, of those and to see them first uh, and they're for sale, 
uh, and their works on paper that are mounted, then please do um, subscribe to my newsletter. You won't get overwhelmed. I only release uh, them every month or so. And uh, I'll put the link into the uh, notes for this video. Okay, thanks a lot. Speak to you next time. Bye-bye.